Hello everyone, this is Janet Coppin with the Socialite Production where we are connecting the world through faith, culture, and entertainment. I say this all the time, but I mean it each and every time I say it. I am excited today. I'm excited about all my guests that are on this platform, right? But this one right here, you guys are in for a treat. So say hello to people. Say hello. Hello, everybody. <laughs> I will introduce him formally um, as we go on, but this is Mr. Lucian Edwards, the president of the Liberian Association of Greater Charlotte. Um, when we start to speak, you will understand why he's here and why I selected him personally for this conversation. Today, the conversation will be on vision, but specifically visions of a leader. A social life production this year, our theme, one of our themes is a vision lifestyle. So we started off the year talking about that and opening up just about how to have vision um, for your life and as you move, because it's a guide and it keeps you focused. And so I've been capturing different people in different parts of the conversation. So again, like I said, I'm excited about today that this is a giant of vision that's gonna be before you um, in a minute. But I want to introduce myself to those who are new to the platform and do not know me. As I said, my name is Janet Coppin, um, the creator of A Social Life Production. And me personally, I am a connector, I'm an investor, I am a community builder. And one of the ways that I'm building community is through this platform. The mission is connecting the world through faith, culture, and entertainment. So when we speak about faith, I'm influencing culture, influencing the world through my faith, which is a relationship with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, right? With culture, I'm bridging the gap within and across culture with authentic stories. So I'm a first-generation Liberian American. I stopped the storytelling off with our culture, but then beyond to capture other cultures, not just the African and Liberian culture. And then there's entertainment. I love storytelling by way of production and media. So that is what you're getting today. And with this, it's painting the picture and capturing stories of individuals and experiences, right? Which is a great way to connect. So I said all of that, hopefully you got enough to know who I am, but today is not about me. Now I'm gonna introduce you all to Mr. Edwards. I'll let him say his full name when he gets into his introduction. But before he goes, I just want to highlight, of course I said he's the president of the Liberian Association of Greater Charlotte. So those, not so much everyone, but a, many people who live in Charlotte and the surrounding areas, anyone who's familiar with the Liberian Association, they're familiar with who Mr. Edwards is, right? But today the purpose is we're not capturing the president, we're capturing the man, the giant, the visionary, who's very dynamic. And if you have the pleasure of knowing him personally, then you have the pleasure of knowing his heart. And his heart has been consistent since the many years that we've been under his leadership. Mind you, leadership isn't just with his title as president. Leadership is his title, his disposition that he carries himself within the community. And so I'm excited for today because he's an intriguing storyteller with rich history. So y'all in for a treat? I know I keep saying it, be in for a treat. But with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and hand the mic, the invisible mic over to Mr. Edwards. Please introduce yourself and just tell the people where you're from. My name is Lucian Saidi Edwards Sr. I presently reside in Charlotte, North Carolina. I am a father, a husband, and a man of faith. I believe in God, believe in Jesus Christ. And I have lived in Charlotte for many years, mm -hmm. since 1989. Mm -hmm. And I've lived in this community and I've raised, raised three beautiful children and married to my wife. And also my mother has lived with me here in Charlotte yes. for many years. Yes. And you, a lot of you who live in Charlotte and have been here since then knew who my mother was. And yeah. it was my family. Yeah. Beautiful family. Thank Beautiful you. family. And so I know I already referenced Liberia, right? But I know you can go a little bit deeper about where you're from in Liberia for those Liberians who are familiar. So tell people where you're from way on the other side of the world. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am from Liberia. I was uh, raised in uh, a township called Painesville, mm -hmm. uh, right outside Monrovia, about 11 miles from Monrovia. 
and that was my home until I came to the United States. Gotcha. And I was uh, uh, raised there, went to school in Monrovia, and uh, um, first time out of Pinsville was to New York City. So that's where all my upbringing is from. And my father, uh, Hubert Edwards, worked for the Ministry of Agriculture, and my mother, uh, Ma Yellow, Mm -hmm. It's a homemaker and a, a native of Liberia who uh, is from that area, Montgomery County, mm -hmm. in, uh, in Liberia. Uh, just a brief history of my background, uh, my, from both sides of my family, I will start first on my father's side. Mm -hmm. uh, my father, my grandfather, uh, his name was Dr. Solomon Theodore Rubin Edwards, and he uh, was from an island in the Caribbean called Antigua. Love it. And he left Antigua and uh, came to the United States to go to school when he was a child prodigy. He uh, really saw his potential and they sponsored him to come to New York City to the um, United States to go to school. Mm -hmm. And why in the United States he became a medical doctor. Okay. But his uh, experience in the United States caused him his whole life to change. As a medical doctor, he uh, tried to help someone and it, it almost cost his life. Oh, did you? Yeah. Uh, yes. Geez. Because you all know back in those days, this the racial thing about, between black and white. Mm -hmm. And after that happened to him, he just uh, came to a realization that no matter what, his humanity was never going to be accepted in the United States. Right. So being, after that, he was from Antigua, but then he joined this gentleman uh, movement. Mm -hmm. This gentleman name was Dr. I mean, was uh, Marcus Garvey, mm -hmm. and Marcus Garvey had the Back to Africa movement, mm -hmm. and he be befriended Marcus Garvey. He joined the movement, mm -hmm. and through that movement, he was able to move to Liberia. Gotcha. And that's how Dr. Salvatore Thierry Rumi ever ended up in Liberia. Mm -hmm. And he was his wife' name was uh, Iris Elizabeth Kamabash. Mm -hmm. But she was from uh, Guyana. Okay. We don't know too much about her background because she mm -hmm. didn't connect. But the good thing about my grandfather was he never lost contact with his brothers. He had two brothers that was on the island of Antigua. Mm -hmm. uh, one was Albert Edwards and the other one was Midland Edwards. Mm -hmm. And they communicated. That's why we tell today we still have a connection with the island. Yes. And that's how he ended. My grandfather was a medical doctor. He got to Liberia. He also became a lawyer. And he was also a hobbyist, he was a carpenter. Mm -hmm. So he was a man of many talents. And going back to Liberia on that voyage, he was a ship doctor. Gotcha. Now that's enough of my father. <laughs> now let me move over to my mother's side. All right. My mother's name was Yellow Plingwe P. Say that one more time for the people. Yellow Plingwe P. I love it. <laughs> and that yellow means you have seen it. Mm -hmm. That's the meaning of that name. And she was a indigenous Basa woman from the Mangibi era, which was also a subset of the Basa tribe called Mamba. So she's a Mamba Basa. She never went to what you call your traditional regular school, where she learned how to read and write in English. But she was fluent in reading her Basa Bible. Mm -hmm. She was a woman of faith. She read her Bible every day in the Basa language. Mm -hmm. Now, my mother's father named was Pierre. We all refer to him just as Old Man Pierre. Mm -hmm. That's all I knew him to be called. And uh, he, he had two other brothers. He was almost from the Guinea area moving into the Maserati area and he was a hunter. Him and his brothers were hunters. And traveling through the hinterland, they discovered a little area today is called Goan. And they established a town. It was a town that was rich in games. They had deer, they have water buffalo, and all of that. So they decided to make that their home, and they settled in that area. Mm -hmm. And he was an establisher. He established the town, and he grew and he became the chief of that town. He encouraged other people to move there with him, and that town is there today. So Omen Pierre was a town setter, mm -hmm. and. But one, one thing I would like to stress about Omen P.A., although he was from that African background where people believe in polygamy, mm -hmm. but he was a one-woman's man. He married his wife, 
and they live together now. Say that one more time for people. He was a one woman's man. Mm -hmm. And he was African. He was African. And a one woman's man. Okay, just making sure they heard that. That's what you yes. Sure. yes, yes, indeed. <laughs> so he, his wife's name was uh, 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 Nasre. Uh, I don't know the exact meaning, but that was his wife. But the, the ironic part about that was his wife was childless. Mm -hmm. She could not conceive, she could mm -hmm. not have children. Mm -hmm. So him being the chief, it was kind of, it, it was causing a talk around, you know, in Africa, if a woman couldn't have a child, people would come up with all sorts of reasons why she couldn't have a child. Mm -hmm. And this man's legacy is going to die because he doesn't have any children. Mm -hmm. So what she decided to do as his wife was to go in and bring in a surrogate to have a child for them so he would have heirs. So she brought in a maiden uh, and she asked him to lay with her to have a child for them. And, uh, and this maiden name was Baal, Count Baal they called her, mm. which was Queen Baal. Now she, she, had, she had my mother, that was my mother's biological mother, Count Baal. Well after she had a child, she turned the child over to my grandfather's wife, uh, 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 Nasre, and she raised my mother as her own. That's the only mother I knew. I learned this story. I learned this story later on in life. That I didn't even realize until I was a grown person that my grandfather's wife was not my mother's biological mother. Wow. So, but the thing is, another twist came in the fact that my mother was a girl. They needed a boy child to for leave the yeah. for the air. So she went and found my grandmother again, got up and found another woman. Another uh, a surrogate by the name of uh, Bama Sve. Oh, you know all the names. Yes. <laughs> and uh, she brought her in to my father, to my grandfather, and they had a son. And this son name is Toga. And and then she raised both of them. She raised Toga and she raised my my mother. And Toga is there till today. My uncle is still there. He's still there. He's still there till today. But the thing about my uncle was he was kind of on the laid back side. He was not, he didn't possess that leadership ability. He wanted to be quiet, he didn't have time for all that stuff. But my mother was the leader. Gotcha. And if you want to know my mother from Charlotte, you know when she came to Charlotte to live with me those many years, she was the one that put together the, 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 the elders association of Charlotte. She brought all the elders together and they yes. had their own little thing. When he went around from house to house every Saturday, yeah, and they had a gathering, yeah. So, and my mother so here in Charlotte was a farmer, and I don't know if I knew this, but right here on North Tryon in Charlotte, for the first time, that house does. Yes, she and my, uh, uh, um, no, what, uh, Junior? Yeah, had a farm back then, and they grew rice in the backyard. They had a rice farm on North Tryon in the backyard and they harvested. I thought it was potato greens. They had potato greens also, but one wow. year they decided to try it and they grew rice and they harvested the rice, they pounded and everything and made cereal and regular rice out of that rice farm on North Tryon. My yellows. My yellows. <laughs> so that's, wow. a, that's, a kind of, that's the kind of person my mother was. Wow. A leader. And and uh, peace be to her. Actually, she's uh, deceased now. And when, for some reason, she realized that her time here on Earth was near, mm -hmm. so she she really pushed us to send her back to Liberia yeah. to lay out the land because she wanted to be buried in our village. Mm. And she passed away in yeah. Liberia. And we all went over there and yeah. had a funeral, and she was buried there. Yeah. So that's the little connection between my father's side mm -hmm. and my mother's side. So yeah. I came from both sides of the yeah. earth. Yeah. You know, and, and I think that history was important to tell because yeah. as you were talking, I can just right. hear so many nuggets. Right. Not only in relation to you, mm -hmm. but your, your kids, yes. even um, your, your wife. Yes. And real quick, everyone, if you hear me slip and say Uncle uh, <laughs> Lou or Auntie Bindu, because there are our community uncles and aunties. But for the sake of this interview, I'm trying to keep it professional and say Mr. Edwards. So if you hear uncle, just, just roll with it, right? <laughs> so that was good history, right? And so I didn't expect for you to go that deep, but it makes sense because it's setting the foundation of the conversation yes. so that people can see the things that you're saying is directly connected to your legacy. Mm -hmm. 
So thank you for that. So as I said that this topic, uh, the topic of the conversation is visions of a leader, um, purpose, faith, right? Uh, leadership. And so as he gave you a really great uh, overview of the history of his family, the history of his legacy, which was really good. But what's really good about it is you don't just know general information, you know deep rooted information that maybe the average family member does not know. And so I, I think it's beautiful and I'm sure that you and your family, y'all, have your time where you do storytelling and, and make discoveries. Even with my family, it's like every year we're finding out new discoveries, but I think it's important to talk yes. about history and document it. As we continue the conversation of history, I want to uh, read to you two quotes. Well, the first quote I'm going to read is, never forget that intelligence rules the world and ignorance carries the burden. Therefore, remove yourself as far from ignorance as possible and seek as far as possible to be intelligent. And then the second quote is, people without knowledge of their past history, origin, and culture is like a tree with no roots. Both of these quotes comes from uh, Mr. Marcus Garvey. And wow. if you guys were listening, wow. as he was talking through history, his legacy is directly connected through Marcus Garvey. For those individuals who may not be familiar with who Marcus Garvey um, was and the importance of his legacy, Talk a little bit about that and as it relates to your grandfather and your family. Marcus Garvey was from Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And he was a political, what you call a freedom fighter, political leader. Mm -hmm. And uh, he formed an organization called the Back to Africa Movement. Mm -hmm. And we all know that uh, after the emancipation, uh, the, the American Colonization Society also had a Back to Africa movement mm -hmm. and they asked all of the free slaves who wanted to go back to Africa to apply to go to this new country that was being formed in Africa called Liberia. And that's how people were moving. Those that wanted to go back mm -hmm. went to Liberia. But I mean, they didn't go directly first. They went to Sierra Leone, Shadow <laughs> Islands. Mm -hmm. And then from Sierra Leone, they went to Bushwa Islands in Liberia. Uh, and that's where the settlement really took uh, root. Uh, but people always want to think about the Americans, the slaves from America that went to Liberia. But there were also other groups that went to Liberia. Nationality. And people from the, uh, the Caribbean yeah. was a huge group of people who went to Liberia. Mm -hmm. And most of them went to the Marcus Garvey movement. That mm -hmm. was his movement. Yeah. And then my grandfather being from the Caribbean, that's how he ended up in Liberia through the Marcos Garvey. So when he was in New York and that movement was taking place, right. he was one of those that migrated. Exactly. Got exactly. you. Got you. Marcos Garvey himself did not go to Liberia. I think in the end he ended up in England. Yeah. Because he ran into trouble with the American government. Yeah. And he was instrumental mm -hmm. of a lot of the 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 the, the people from the Caribbean mm -hmm. migrating. Mm -hmm. Liberia. Of course, we met this week and we kind of did an overview of what we're going to be talking about. And you mentioned that, you know, people say you look so serious and, you know, what Are you talking about me? I think so. I don't know. You can't judge a book by its cover. And again, that's another reason why I have you here. Now, I think you do a good job of smiling, at least around us. Maybe it depends on who you're around. But the misconception that people may have about you because you may kind of look serious, and I think you say it's a cat, you stretch your face yes. and you smile. Yes. Talk about that a little bit. Yes, uh, I've always been that way uh, in terms of the way I look. Mm -hmm. If you met me for the first time didn't know me, you would think I'm not a friendly person. Yeah. Because I'm always serious. I'm all, I always had this serious look, so people would think that I was me, but if you, you know, to know me is to love me mm -hmm. because I love people. Mm -hmm. I love people. I like to be around people. I grew up in a house, you know, big families, you know, a household. Mm -hmm. And I always, I'm used to, and I love being around people. I get bored real easily when yeah. I'm alone. Okay. Yes. Okay. But I just always had this serious look because I'm always in a deep, uh, 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 Stop. Tough mm -hmm. process mm -hmm. a lot of time. Mm -hmm. And when people are talking to me, I like to understand like what you're saying. Process. Yes, so I'm <laughs> processing it. And of, of, of course, and the expression of my face will show that I'm somewhere else. So it, it will come across like I'm not friendly, but I'm not. I'm a very, very person. you know, talk to my children, talk mm -hmm. to my close friends, they will let you know mm -hmm. that uh, 
I love to help people. Mm -hmm. That's what brings me joy. Right. I like to make people happy. Right. So I'm always willing to help. That's right. That's how I am. So right. Don't let this face no, fool you. Don't let the face fool you. Yes. Don't right. let it fool you. And as I look at his face, all I see is his daughter Ruby, which we'll get into it. But because sometimes Ruby, she don't look as serious, but sometimes it's kind of like a. But it's like you're just processing and right. you're you're reading the room. Right. And so speaking about Marcus Garvey and his back to um, Africa movement, in which why the connection is so special because it's not just back to Africa, but specifically Liberia. And as he talked about where the free slaves settled. We talk about uh, Liberia, when we met, you mentioned, you said Africa is the cradle of civilization, right? right. And that being that you're from Africa, specifically Liberia, the connection, because you talked a lot about the connection between Liberia and America, and there's many who don't know about that connection, right? Mm -hmm. So you did touch on it a little bit, but just for the sake of history and kind of adding clarity around why Liberia and Liberians are very special and why there is a special or should be a special connection between Liberia and America, just talk about that, whatever part you want to touch on in the history of that. Okay. Uh we all know that Liberia, uh, after the Emancipation Proclamation, the American Colonization Society, mm -hmm. which uh, included people, the founders like uh, uh, James Monroe and a lot of other mm -hmm. prominent people in the United States got together mm -hmm. and formed this association called the American Colonization Society. Yeah. And they were, what they were trying to do is, a lot of them were uh, fathers of black children from slaves. And so most of them loved the kids and they wanted to make sure that the kids were to go somewhere where they could achieve their full potential. Yeah, yeah. They knew that America at that That's time they you know they never were gonna be able to achieve the humanity mm -hmm. in this country. Mm -hmm. So they got together from the society and they went and purchased that land. I don't know the exact detail of how they purchased that yeah. land. But that land in Liberia, called Liberia today, was purchased for a place where all the free slaves that wanted to go back could go to. That's how Liberia was founded. Mm -hmm. And that's why I made Liberia so unique in Africa because of our connection with America and the influence that the free slaves had in that part of Right. Africa, right. So you know the language, the food, uh, the way people kept their homes, yeah, and and all of that. Even the government, the government, the, the, government, the setup yeah. of the government, mm -hmm. everything is is image mm -hmm. after the United States. Yeah. Even if you look at the flag, yeah, you know, yeah. the, the red, white, and blue, mm -hmm. the, the the white stripes. So that's our connection with the United States, and uh, uh, we've gone through. Uh, there might be things that people will look at that historians might look at. I would say it was negative with the experience with the American Liberians, mm -hmm. they were called, and the indigenous people. Mm -hmm. And there was stuff there too that you can look at that was also positive. positive. Oh. So it depends on who's telling the story. Yeah. And I think the, the thing about people like me, because right now to find in Liberia the 100% African Americans that went by, or American Liberians that we call them, mm -hmm. is difficult. Most of us now are mixed. Right. So we. We can we can relate to both sides like right, me right like I told you my mother is a pure Basa woman yeah and I speak the language yeah and I understand it too. I spend a lot of time with the people on the ground and I talk to them mm -hmm. and also my father is from his background is from Antigua yeah back to Africa movement right so I can see it from that angle mm -hmm. also so you can look at it and you can see the pros and the cons and the cons and the pros mm -hmm. so, and that's where we are now so it's very important that. We, we learn our history, know where we came from. Because I think if, you, if when you read a quote from Abu Dhabi, it says something like this, but I'll quote it in the way I know yeah, it. Yeah. We should say that in order to know where you're going, you yeah. have to know where you came from. Mm -hmm. You have to know your history. Yeah. Who makes, I mean, what makes Lucian who Lucian is today? Right. Is because of my background. Right. Uh, father's side and my mother's side. And right. I'm proud of both sides. Right. I think I mean I'm fortunate to come from two rich uh, leadership right side from both sides of my family. Right. So I can see it, I can relate, I can critique. Right. Yeah, we were doing some um history 
lesson for our family as well. And again, every year I'm learning new, new things. Mm -hmm. And with this quote of Marcus Garvey is so true, but when you look at the black American, one of their, and, and I'm saying there's, I'm black American too, but I'm a Liberian as well. Right. So I'm in the middle, right. but black Americans who don't know their ties, who don't know their history, mm -hmm. That's the challenge, and I think that's what's going on today, and that's why Africa is now being admired because we can draw the line of where we came from. Right. They're, they don't know, unless they do Ancestry.com, but I just wanted to address that because this quote, yes, is true, but it's like everyone does not have, I would say, the privilege mm -hmm. of being able to draw that fine line. Right. I don't know if you want to address it that. It helps you to enrich your life. To, once you understand, uh, who you are, right? And where you came from, right? And all that. And like I was saying the last time, there's two things I believe that determine a person's characteristics, mm -hmm. which is the heredity, the bloodline, mm -hmm. and the environment, you right. know, what you are exposed to, right? And if you if you can pretty much connect those two, mm -hmm. it enriches your life, right? That's what I believe. No, I, I'm so in agreement. That's why I, I'm always. If you ask my children to tell you, I'm I'm the great teacher in the house. Yes, I'm always. You know, teaching them, and when they call me, they ask me questions. Mm -hmm. And if I don't have the answer, then they are just find out. I'll find the answer. Yeah. Then too. yeah. Well, I wanted to know. I know it's going to make the life even more, and you know, it's going to make their lives better. Yes. By knowing, you know, the history. Where where the from. history, yeah. exactly. That's good. You know, yes. I always say, you know, because I have my friends, my American friends, and, and others, right, that will say, man, I admire, you know, your culture, and you know, you know where you've come from, and you know, history, and culture 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 and, and one thing that i said i said well that's true and i am thankful for that but <clears throat> you guys have culture too yes right so even if you can't trace back to africa or jamaica or wherever you, you've come from look at the history that your family created or you know from as far back as you can trace mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. build on that appreciate that right. and 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 continue slash create the legacy from that. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying is definitely true, and I think it's just start from where you can. Right. But there's some things, e even though we know our culture, this it don't start from the knowledge that you have. It still goes further back, exactly. right? Exactly. And there may be some pivotal things that will be good for us to know, but we we don't. Mm -hmm. So and, and 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 just to add to that, uh, uh, Jordan, I have friends. Now, I grew up with in Liberia, mm -hmm. and uh, who are 100% indigenous Liberian, right. right? Who do not know the history. They do not speak the language, they only speak English. Right. And uh, uh, so what happens to them? Right. But they, they're still productive people. Right. Like you said, right where you are located. Right where you are. What, as far back as you know, can help you. It can. You don't have to go all the way back to uh, the, you know, Two thousand years. Right, 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 right. The environment plays a big role. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why people wonder why I moved when I came I moved to New York and then from New York I moved to Shaw, mm -hmm. or my first house. Well, I woke up one morning and I had to decide to sell our house quick and move. Right, right. And move into another neighborhood because there were certain things that were going on where I had my first house. Right. I didn't want my children to get exposed to. Mm -hmm. So to protect them, I had to get them out of there. Right. It's that. Right. And I'm glad I did. Right. Yes. Right. Yes. That's what leaders do. Yeah. <laughs> I want to continue the conversation around history because you say when you know where you're from, pretty much talking about identity, knowing your identity, right. then you know where you're going, you know how to move. So at the beginning, you talked about you are a man of faith, right? You, you are governed your birth out of of course, your relationship with your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so for me, when you talk about tracing my history and knowing where I'm from and knowing why I'm here and knowing my identity, before I was a Liberian American, before I was Janet, before I was this community crusader, I was a child of God, right? That's and right. I was placed here on April 13th, 1981 for purpose, actually prior to that. And so we talk about your history and your connection to the source and why you are here on this earth. Talk about how your relationship with Christ has governed you as a leader and visionary. Well, I, uh, I was, I can just say I was born in the church. Mm -hmm. uh, my grandfather, Dr. Solomon Edwards mm -hmm. from the island, mm -hmm. they were Methodists. Mm -hmm. 
on the island before. That's it. And we have continued that. Till today, I'm still a Methodist. Okay. And the way the Methodist Church is structured and uh, how everything is done by method. And uh, we have three books uh, in the Methodist Church that we, go, we are governed by. That's the Holy Bible, the United Methodist Book of Discipline, mm -hmm. and the United Methodist Book of Prayer. Gotcha. And that has always been, we always have, in Liberia, we used to have prayer on Sunday at home before going to church. Mm -hmm. And we have to memorize uh, Bible verses. Yeah. And they say, train up a child in the way you should go so that when it's old, you will not depart from it. Mm -hmm. And those early learning about the church and about Jesus Christ and why he believed in his teachings mm -hmm. have always remained with me. Good. And that's why I've guided me through my life. So I'm that's a man true. of faith. Right. And I've tried and I'm, I'm sure I've did depart that into my children. Of course. So they are yes. people of faith also. Absolutely. So we, you know, we, 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 we what do you call it, we resist evil. We do no harm. If you can't help a man, you don't. I mean, if you can't help a person, you do not hurt him. Right. Always means well. Believe in karma. If you do wrong, it's going to come back to you. But if you do right, you know. I remember an old man, I used to visit our house in Liberia. Mm -hmm. He was not fluent in English. Mm -hmm. and, but he used to always come out. I always remember him. He used to laugh and he used to say in his Liberian language, he always said, Good never lost. He always used to say that. I mean, when you do good, it always come back to be good. It, it, does. it never loses. It always wins. It does. And those are the kind of uh, those are things that guide me right. to today. My right. Thing. I believe in Jesus Christ. Believe in the church. When we came to shop, my wife, Benu, she was a uh, Baptist mm -hmm. in Liberia. So when we moved to Charlotte, the first church we went to was a Baptist church. Is that uh, first uh, Baptist? Yeah, first Baptist uptown. Yeah. And yeah. I went to that church for thirteen years. Mm -hmm. And then one day I just woke up and things were not, you know, we used to discuss all the time. Mm -hmm. So I just asked, why don't we try my church? Yeah. That's what the Methodist church. Yeah. And I also, not just my church, mm -hmm. but a church of a pastor who's from Liberia who had become a friend of mine. Mm -hmm. Emmanuel Morris. Yes, yes. So I decided to go and join the church. Because I love my Liberian people. I kind of miss them. Yeah, that community. You know, they kind of community, the mm -hmm. accent and... And, uh, Culture, the yeah, 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 gesture, yeah, yeah. everything. You know, one, like when I go to Liberia every time, when I get off the plane and I enter the airport, mm -hmm. and I hear the people speaking, I can't. I know people thinking something wrong with me, but I move around with this big smile on mm -hmm. my face because the you know the melodic sound of those of the accent, mm -hmm. and the voice, the lingo, it just flops me. And yes, I, I'm just. I feel so happy to be there. Yes, that's why you see. Um, in the Liberal community. Absolutely. I love my Liberal community. You're leading the Liberal community. And uh, yeah. I just, it brings me joy to be yeah. among my people. You see how you just lit up, like your whole <laughs> face is lit up, like you can see stars in his eyes. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I love it. With my mother, mm -hmm. I went to visit a griot. You know what a griot is, right? Mm -mm. A griot is like a historian. Oh, okay. For so, Liberia. Yeah, and many people say griot. Gotcha. But it's, we, you know, it's called griot. Mm -hmm. It's like, because they didn't have recorded history. Yeah. But they have people who are gifted with this mind of memory. Yes. And they call them griot. Okay. So they were the town history. And most of the time it was it was too family line. Mm -hmm. Like if I was a griot, and then yeah, I would pass, be on the video. And I would pass it on to LJ. Uh-huh. And then after LJ would pass it on to Louis. Gotcha. And they would go, and I visited a griot. And he told me the whole story that I've been telling you about my grandfather. My wow, father. interesting. And I've heard the story before. But when that man sat, I had to record it. And when that man sat with me and started recording it, my hair rose on my head. I was wow. like, I got goosebumps. Like, he remember all of How did he remember every detail? Mm -hmm. What my father told me, what my mother told me, what my uncles told me, they man knew everything. Mm -hmm. And he was just another person in the village. Right. And he was a town of his story. I like and he started that. naming this person be God, this person be yeah. this person be God. Then I asked him, why better document? I was like, so I went, after he did that at the funeral, mm -hmm. I paid another visit to him at his mm -hmm. house, like carrying pressing, you know, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. carrying cola, dog, white bucket, mm -hmm. and all that stuff. And sat with him for four hours. Wow. And he related the whole, my whole family history. Wow. And I recorded, I recorded it on video. Mm -hmm. I have it online. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the bad part about it is in the Basa language. Uh, but no, that's so still it, it can be, it can be translated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
That's and good. See, see, I speak in Boston, so I want to, you know. That's I, good. <clears throat> that that would have been good to capture for that.